People have basic needs, basic things that they want to be sold with technology, and they just want that to be very convenient as possible. Hey folks, I'm Brett Kinsella, founder of VoiceBot.ai, and today we're talking about voice AI as a feature as opposed to a conversational assistant. Many people think of this as voice user interface, and I'm here with Otto Soderlin from Speechly. Hello, Otto. Hey, Brett. Good to be here. All right. Well, welcome to 10 Minutes On. Our topic today is a very important one. And Speechly has been outspoken about the situation where everyone rushed to the voice assistant model after searing Siri and Alexa and they miss the low-hanging fruit of voice UI. So tell us about your thesis. Great. So um, I think it's great that the big tech companies have been so interested in voice technology already for years now. And they've been really investing in, in bringing these technologies to the market. And their rationale has been that they want to create this new ecosystem, this new app store, this new platform. And it, it's a great vision, I mean, especially if you're a big tech company. But at the same time, when we've seen what the uh, user experience of these assistant experiences have become. We are in a situation where we have excellent solutions, but actually the, the problems they're able to solve are actually quite simple ones. So if you look at the, the different most popular use cases that assistants are used for today, they're used for very basic tasks, you know, like setting alarms or checking the weather or, you know, playing music. So very simple things. And it's actually pretty, pretty obvious and um, the reason for that one uh, is that these technologies have been built uh, to create this ecosystem of, of services and with the vision of creating the new comp computing platform. And maybe someday in the future that might happen. But today, we are still in a situation where people have basic things um, that they want to get sold with technology. And the current way just isn't catering to that. If we compare um, the conversational paradigm uh, to the paradigm that, that we at Speechly have been uh, really focused on and outspoken about, which we call uh, voice as a feature, there's a key, uh, certain key differences there. If you look at the, the type of the interaction, the conversational experiences, they really focus on actually having a, a conversation where there is going back and forth between the user and the system. Whereas the voice as a feature world, it's really about finding the best way to complete the user's tasks as efficiently and fast as possible. Typically, uh, up until the recent years, especially um, the assistant um, uh, paradigm has been really focused on voice only interactions. So, so only adding voice as a channel um, to, to, to enable the interaction. Whereas in the voice as a feature world, it's all about uh, creating multimodal solutions, better ways to solve the end user's problem. And um, while the voice assistants always look into solving the problems in turn-based model, going back and forth, the voice as a feature model really wants to directly and fast solve the end user's problem on one go, on zero turns, if you want. And then also, typically, the voice assistants are built on these closed um, walled gardens um, where certain owners of these platforms then want to control the branding and the data, whereas, you know, the voice as a feature is really about keeping users in the platforms of the brands. Yeah, so I, I think about this turn-based model that we've we've come across or that we've we've been using for a while, and it is very effective for certain types of solutions. And, you know, I think about the popularity of voice assistants like Alexa and Siri. And then again, I look at the market data that we have and I find that I think it's nine of the top 10 use cases, most common use cases on smart speakers, for example, are actually these single shot direct request. It's request and it happens. It's either an event or information is returned. It's not this back and forth conversation, even though the system is set up to support that. Absolutely, it's spot on. I think that that is a reflection uh, of the current ways how people want to use this technology. People have basic needs, basic things that they want to be sold with technology, and they just want that to be very convenient as possible. 
they aren't really looking for conversations. People have different ways to, to you know, get fulfill the need of having a conversation that typically involves other people. And to be quite frank, you know, even though coming from the voice AI space, uh, I can admit that the technology is not yet today at the level where all of these conversational AI systems would actually be able to replicate humans in a level that would not create this, this awkward, uh, awkward situation where it's very close to the, the, to the people, but not, not, really, uh, not really people. So the Uncanny Valley has not yet been, been uh, passed through. Yeah, and I think there's a difference between understanding intent and having a natural back and forth. And there's also a difference between understanding intent and then how you adjust to that or how you respond to that as a system. Because there are times when you could just fulfill the request like instantly, or you could add information. And I remember one company really focusing on this, like trying to understand the emotional state of the user. And if it was, if the person was happy, they would give them more additional information, longer conversation. If it wasn't, it would be more terse. But it's it struck me that that was probably over engineering the solution. Um, and and like you and I were talking about this earlier, I just bring up this graphic about the the dis the differences between this turn based model and the direct voice UI interaction model. Yes, absolutely. And this was actually one of the core. Um, insights that led us to originally found Speechly many, many years ago. If we look at the current voice assistants, how they work today is that they actually process speech in a sequential manner. They first transcribe speech into text using automatic speech recognition. And when the user has stopped speaking and has been silent for a while, the signal is endpointed and the transcript is generated. Then that is passed on to natural language understanding, where the indents and entities are extracted from the piece of the transcript. And after that, there is the business logic that figures out how to respond to the user. And if you look at an uh, experience like that, that's exactly how the series, the Alexa, the Google Assistants of this world work. So when you speak to the system and you interact with it, basically nothing happens. And when you stop speaking, then you're starting to see some kind of like processing signaling. And after a couple of seconds, you get some kind of response. And the problem with this one is that, especially if you are doing more complex utterances, um, the risk of there being some kind of error in the communication and the failure, it keeps accumulating. And the probability of, uh, of <laughs> there being a single small error in the interaction when you have a long utterance that you process only at the end gets really big. So the risk of failure for the whole utterance is massive. Now, the, the speechly system works differently. So the speech recognition and natural language understanding are done in a streaming manner. So that means that the um, uh, intent and entity detection for the user's speech is started the moment they start to speak. And what this means is that by having um, visibility to the user's intents and entities while they're still speaking, this information can be leveraged in a multimodal user interface to provide the user with very fast feedback uh, on, on, on their utterance using a visual feedback mechanism. And this allows actually the system to, to uh, quickly iterate. It allows the user to see their errors and quickly fix those errors. And it just makes a very intuitive user experience. And this really, this means that, that if there are certain small failures along the way, those can be quickly corrected and continuing, thus allowing the user to, to fulfill a lot more complex utterances, thus solving more complex, more value-adding tasks. Yeah, this strikes me as more similar to human interaction, right? Because we use all sorts of different cues. So for example, you might say something and I might look, oh, geez, you know, like I don't understand what you're saying. Or I might start doing something like handing you a, a cup of coffee when what you really wanted was a fork, right? And so you can say, oh, no, no, I wanted the fork, right? And so this idea of it not being... Uh, is, is not being, I, I think we call this a uh, full duplex. We, we mm -hmm. want it to be able to be both sides to be fully interactive throughout the process. And everybody watching this will be familiar with something that does this today. Google search tries to auto complete your information and it sort of gives you ideas as you're going along. This is the other side of that. This is allowing you to make a correction. And I really like this from a search feature. It's really, really straightforward for people to see. When you ask for something, it starts showing you something on the screen. If it's not the thing you say, no, I meant red, 
you know, or something like that. And it'll switch everything to, to the red color or something like that. Yes, exactly. It, exactly. It makes interacting uh, with machines uh, a bit more natural, but uh, at the same time, the machines are not trying to replicate being people. They are machines, but they are just super fast and efficient machines that can be interacted with natural language and uh, an intuitive human-like way. And I think that that's, that's the key to creating better voice user experiences. And that's what we want most of the time. We want the machine just to solve the task. We, we're not looking for a relationship with it. Exactly, exactly. And even though people actually nowadays use technology in many different ways, it's still at the end of the day, it's really about utility and about being able to achieve uh, a task in the typically the fastest, simplest, and most enjoyable way possible. That's, that's what right. technology should be. So we have a lot of use cases out there. We have voice assistants like Siri and Alexa and Google Assistant all serving these things. They've trained people to understand that voice is a potential option for a user interface. Where do you expect voice AI as a feature, these direct interactions where it's not conversational, but it gives you that immediate response? Where do you expect, what, what uh, use cases do you expect for this uh, voice UI to show up more in the next couple of years? Yeah, I mean, already today, we can see that the, the biggest, most popular um, use cases for voice technology today are actually voice features, even though they're oftentimes built on top of these, these assistant platforms. You know, think about navigation, you, you speak to it, and, and you know, there is a multimodal visual feedback back to you. Banking, it's usually not about having a long conversation, but it's actually getting some piece of information or navigating to some place really fast or, you know, music playing it's about finding what you're wanting and controlling the experience not having a lengthy conversation or you know tv control or or whatever so it's kind of like creeping sneakily into our daily lives um which has been made made possible by the increased awareness uh, uh like driven by the marketing uh, dollars of the big tech. So everybody in the industry should be very thankful for these, these big companies. But, but when we are looking at how people adapt it in a daily basis, they're actually adapting the most simple, the voice as a feature use cases. So we're going to see on the consumer side, more and more of the tedious tasks that we are used to doing using touching and, and you know typing and all of that will be migrated to voice where it makes sense, not all of them, but where it makes sense. And also in our professional lives, we're also going to see more and more um, of these voice enabled professional tools making us more effective. You know, um, it's especially, of course, for us, the desk workers, there will be more ways how we interact using voice with the technology around us and within the social experiences, the online discussions we're having. But also for the people who are not working on their desks, you know, who are you know, working somewhere out there. They are, they are getting better equipped to be better at what they're doing. So I think that this is something that in a, in a couple of years' time, we would have not expected the amount of progress we've seen in the voice UI space. Yeah. Well, I guess Star Trek is coming. We're going to be able to ask our computer to do things. It'll just do, us for us, it, do it for us. And it won't be like C-3PO from Star Wars, who always wanted to continue the conversation when you just wanted that robot to be quiet. Otto, how can viewers learn more about this idea of voice AI as a feature? So um, we are um, talking a lot about this in our blog, um, in our YouTube channel. So you can find, find our blog from our website, spc.com. Uh, you can follow us in YouTube. Of course, we're talking a lot about, a lot about, a lot about this in our social channels, in Twitter, we're Speechly API, in LinkedIn, we're Speechly. So follow us. Come engage into the discussion, challenge us, share your perspective, and you know, join the discussion. Okay. That's 10 minutes on voice AI as a feature with Speechly's Otto Soderlund. Thank you so much for coming today. Hey, look for more great conversations like this from voicebot.ai. And please like and subscribe to this channel. I'm Brett Kinsella from Voicebot. Check out our other 10 minutes on videos to learn more about the evolution of voice AI technology. And let me know what you think in the comments below or on Twitter, where you can find me at Brett Kinsella. Thank you. Have a great day. Hey everyone, I'm Brett Kinsella, founder of voicebot.ai, but you already know that. Please like and subscribe to this channel. That'll help us with YouTube's algorithm and you'll get notified every time the next 10 minutes on video drops.